Thank you, Representative Smyrie. Uh, I am really feel privileged to have this opportunity uh, to speak about a great American, Ralph Puckett. Um, you can give him a lot of titles. You can call him a great soldier. You can call him a patriot, a hero, great American. He's just an all-around good guy. He's a great guy. He served his country heroically and proudly for many years, fought in two wars, Korea and Vietnam, highly decorated. And I would submit to you that he's still serving today. He's very much involved with Fort Benning, with helping with training out there, and of course, his affiliation with the Rangers as the honorary colonel of the regiment. Everybody's well aware of that. And he lives a great example for all those young people. I never served in the same unit with Ralph Bucket, but I was well aware of his reputation and all he had accomplished. But I am proud to say that I served in the same army with Ralph Bucket. Still today, he's a mentor, a role model, even for some of us old soldiers. He's a great trainer. In fact, he, while he was at West Point, he took some of these young cadets that were in his squad and developed them into great leaders. And a prime example is Lieutenant General Sam Wetzel over here, who was in Ralph's squad at West Point. He did a good job with him, Ralph. Ralph trained well, and Sam did well, and Sam trained me, so it comes on down. In his book, uh, Words for Warriors, it's, a, it's an invaluable book for young leaders who lead soldiers in combat and in peace. But I submit to you it's also an invaluable book for those in industry, young leaders who can learn from the experiences that military leaders have. Uh, I think that book could well have been titled uh, words from a warrior as, as opposed to words for warriors because certainly Ralph was a warrior but he wouldn't have that he's a very modest man he deflects any kind of credit to others that's not his nature to take the credit so you have to ask how can a man so accomplished has, de has demonstrated so much bravery in combat display such great humility well, I think it's because he's a soldier, through and through. He was born to lead and serve his country, which he has done with extraordinary success. And I'm proud to say that I know Ralph Puckett, and I carry your rucksack for you, sir. Congratulations. A friend of yours who could not uh, be here tonight but wanted to share a special message with everyone, uh, uh, Dr. Carlton Saver has sent this message for you. Congratulations, Ralph and Jeannie, on the most recent uh, award. I'm very sorry I can't be there with you and Jeannie to celebrate with all the rest, but I had a previous commitment that I made over a year ago. Plus the fact they kept this uh, award quite secret. <laughs> but what is not a secret is how much you deserve this award. I've known you, Ralph, uh, for about 26 years, but I've known of you for all my life. I cannot think of a single individual in Columbus that is more deserving of the Boy Scouts Distinguished Citizen Award. I wish you and Jeannie a happy evening and look forward to seeing you again. And thanks again for being my friend and mentor all these years. Give a Dr. Saber round of applause. Thank you very much. And to introduce our uh, guest of honor tonight, we call upon Mr. Greg Camp, who will now introduce our honoree. Thank you very much, Calvin. Um, I don't know if you all know it, but there, there's a script here, and I'm, I'm supposed to read from the script, and the script uh, essentially uh, is the biography that's in your program uh, today, and I would, I would refer you to that biography, uh, but Colonel Puckett told me five minutes ago that he would shoot me if I read this script. 
So I am literally on my own. Um, and not only that, I had no idea what General Cabeza or Car uh, Carl were going to say beforehand. Um, and a couple of thoughts uh, had occurred to me in that last five minutes that we're already covered. Um, so um, we'll, we'll start with this. One of the things I did not know when I read uh, Colonel Puckett's biography uh, is, is the amount of scouting that he had done. That's one thing that in the years that I've known uh, Ralph, I did not know that he was an Eagle Scout and that he was a Scout Master and all the, that scouting has done to make him into the person that he is today. But there are a few things that I picked up over the years about Ralph that I would like to share with you that are not on his biography. Um, one thing is, is Ralph grew up uh, during the sort of formative years of a teenager during World War II, and Ralph always wanted to be a fighter pilot. Uh, and when he went to West Point in the summer of 1945, uh, World War II was still raging in the Pacific. There was not an Air Force Academy. In fact, there wasn't even an Air Force. There was a U.S. Army Air Corps. And Ralph went to West Point with the intention of becoming a fighter pilot. But by the time he graduated in 1949, actually by the, by the summer of 1948, there was something that they did at West Point. They would send the cadets to all the installations where the branches of service that they could select from uh, were, were located. Um, and I'll put this in a positive light. When he came to Fort Benning, he was overwhelmed with the infantry, and he decided that what he wanted to do was become an infantryman. And so Ralph uh, chose the infantry and graduated in 1949 uh, from West Point as a second lieutenant of infantry. About a year later, uh, in June of 1950, a war broke out in Korea. Uh, Ralph uh, was sent to Korea right after the, the war broke out. He was 23 years old at the time, a second lieutenant, and the 8th Army decided they wanted to have a ranger company. They didn't have a ranger company, but they decided they wanted to have one. Ralph volunteered to be in that company. He actually volunteered just to be a soldier in that company, but as a lieutenant, he was the highest ranking officer there, so he became the company commander. And as all of you all know in here, normally company commanders are experienced captains that have been in the Army for quite a while, uh, and that's if you've got a regular company, not to mention if you have a ranger company. But Ralph uh, got this ranger company, and of course, not only was Ralph new to it, but all the 51 soldiers that he had were new to it as well. And so he trained them first, uh, and he trained them to be the tough rangers that we all know Ralph to be. And it was a good thing, too, because they came into heavy, heavy contact, uh, I think, on the, on the night of 25 and 26 November of 1950. And during that fight, uh, Ralph was wounded initially uh, in taking the objective uh, and then was wounded twice more uh, in five or six counterattacks that ensued after that. And he told his soldiers to leave him on the objective, uh, and his soldiers simply wouldn't do that. And so they carried him off the objective, and Ralph is quick to, to give praise to those soldiers for him being here tonight with us. Um, but a story that's not in his bio that I would like to tell you is, because he was from Tifton, Georgia, uh, he was sent to um, Martin Army Hospital here at Fort Benning to recover. And his picture was in the local newspapers, in the Le Ledger or the Inquirer, because I don't think they were combined at the time. And uh, his high school English teacher had moved from Tifton to Columbus High School. And she saw his picture in the paper, and he looked a little sad and forlorn. So he told a couple of his high school uh, female students that they needed to go visit him. And one of those students was Jeannie Martin. And uh, although she didn't originally um, agree to do that, she eventually did go with another one of her girlfriends. And then when she walked into his room, his father was there with him at the time, and, and when the two girls walked in, he told Ralph, you will marry one of these two young ladies. <laughs> and, um, and sure enough, a couple of years later, uh, Ralph and Jeannie were married, and, and as they say, you know, the rest is history. They raised these three wonderful children and invested in them, and that was a great investment because they now have six grandchildren uh, out of that investment. Um, Ralph would go on, as his biography says, to do so many other things uh, in his life, uh, and then he came back in Vietnam and, and earned a second Distinguished Service Cross. Uh, the Distinguished Service Cross is second only to the uh, Medal of Honor. He earned a Distinguished Service Cross for that first action that I described, and he earned another one uh, in Vietnam. And uh, for those of you that might not be familiar, Vietnam was a war that was fought mostly at the company level. There weren't many battalion-level battles and so forth. Uh, Ralph was a battalion commander at the time, and one of his companies was in a terrible firefight uh, a life-or-death firefight, and Ralph managed to, to get in there as the battalion commander. 
And when he got in there, he so inspired his soldiers that they fought back uh, against the odds and, and, and defeated the enemy. And Ralph, wounded twice more, uh, earned a second Distinguished Service Cross. Ralph has, uh, he is the most highly decorated uh, soldier in our community, in fact, in, in almost any community that I can think of. Um, and Ralph would go on and do all the other things that are in his bio after he got out of the Army and Outward Bound and the Discovery Program and, and, and all those sorts of things. But in 1996, he went back to his roots and he became the honorary colonel of the, of the Ranger Regiment. Um, and these young Rangers can attest to this. Uh, but Ralph wasn't just the honorary colonel to come and speak at dinners like this and uh, to, to encourage the soldiers and so forth. Ralph was, was going to be an active honorary uh, colonel. So if he was going to be the honorary colonel, he was going to be where the Rangers were. So he went to training with them. He went to the Joint Training Center with them. He went to the National Training Center with them. He went on deployments with them. Well, in 2002, when the Rangers started getting deployed to Afghanistan and Iraq, that's where R Ralph thought he ought to be. And I believe it's true that the last patrol that Ralph uh, walked on with Rangers in Afghanistan was sometime after his 80th birthday. Uh, and Ralph could have stayed on as the honorary colonel, but he felt like uh, some of those injuries that he had incurred earlier in his uh, combat career had, had caught up with him, and he could no longer keep up with, with the tougher than Boy Scout Rangers. And, and so he, uh, he said, if I can't keep up with them out in the field, if I can't keep up with them where they are, uh, then, then I'm going to turn it over to a younger person, and, and he did. Um, I, I would imagine that Ralph would tell you, for all the accomplishments that he's had, the thing that he's most proud of, though, is his, his family, his wife, his three children, and his six grandchildren. And I can think of nobody who hasn't already won it, because I am sitting with uh, Frank and, and General Caveza, but I can think of nobody who hasn't already earned this award that's more deserving than Colonel Ralph Puckett. Sir. Thank you, Greg. Colonel Puckett, thank you for your commitment and service to the betterment of our country. Uh, it's easy to see why you're being honored here tonight. Please accept this from the Boy Scouts of America and, and our appreciation for all the service that you have given to the Scouts around the world. So please accept this on behalf of, of the Boy Scouts. Please welcome Colonel Puckett, our, our honoree. Thank you. I'd like to put those introductions, I had three of them it seems, in proper perspective. I do that by quoting General Eisenhower. He said, humility must always be the portion of any individual whose acclaim was earned by the blood of his soldiers and the sacrifices of his friends. They deserve the credit. They're the ones who carried me on their shoulders. I'd also like to give credit to my wife. I owe her everything. She's my hero. She's the wind beneath my wings. I'd be nothing without her. I want to thank Anthony Berger, our scout executive, for all the work that he's done, all the work that his team has done to make this